Airlines such as Pan Am, United, and TWA began offering small carry-on bags emblazoned with their logos during the 1950s. These flight bags were sold through mail-order catalogs at airport stores, and sometimes they were even given out to first-class passengers and as promotional items for travel agencies. The flight bag was featured in airline advertising and promotions, and it became a status symbol for the new worldly traveler. These bags lasted into the 1980s, when demand fell, and airline cost-cutting measures basically eliminated them altogether. The days of flying the friendly skies and seeing open cockpit doors ended on 9-11. But the memories of watching the pilots and seeing the view out the cockpit window was one that mesmerized travelers. Although the doors are often open prior to takeoff due to flight and ground crew preparations, the doors today are secured for the duration of the flight. If a pilot does exit the cockpit during flight, there are now procedures that keep the flight deck secure, including blocking the aisle with the drink cart during those transitions. As with open cockpit doors during flight, it was also very common for children to experience visiting the flight deck during the flight. During the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, kids would be invited up to meet the pilots, shown the cockpit, and if they were lucky, don the captain's hat. They would also receive their flight wings, which were novelty pins that resembled the flight crews, but they were usually made of wood or plastic. These pins were often treasured mementos for children flying during the 20th century. One thing that you rarely see nowadays are airline sky caps located in front of the terminals. These were curbside baggage check-in locations that expedited checking in for a flight. Instead of waiting in a long line in the terminal, sky caps made it quick and easy to check in as you pulled up to be dropped off. They also worked for tips only, and they would help you with luggage carts, wheelchairs, and strollers too. These can still be found occasionally, especially at larger airports in the U.S., but they are becoming another perk that is slowly disappearing. There was also a time when most airports around the country offered lockers that you could drop a quarter into to store your carry-on luggage so you didn't have to carry it around with you while you were in between flights. Travelers would often lock these things up as they headed to the bar, restaurant, or one of the many shops located in the airport. Today, these lockers have become few and far between with the increased security and the emphasis on keeping your luggage with you at all times. Airports even make announcements to not leave your suitcases unattended while waiting for your flight. So these lockers have been removed from many airports. Before the rise of the internet, Planning a flight and then purchasing tickets used to be much more complex, so travel agents were used to help in the process. Travel agents can still be found, but it's hard to find a brick-and-mortar business that allows you to walk in to plan a vacation. Today, independent travel agents work from home and plan more personalized trips, but the heyday for travel agencies ended when the travel websites, like Expedia, came onto the scene. The ability to purchase directly from the airline's website also made the need for travel agents obsolete. Pan American Airways was one of the most recognized airlines in the world. It was often considered the most luxurious to fly, and they would indeed pass out flight bags to elite passengers. Pan Am ruled the skies up until the 1970s, when deregulation increased competition and fuel prices skyrocketed. The iconic airline may have survived this, but the 1988 Lockerbie Scotland bombing really sealed their fate as the company folded in 1991. Before cell phones, apps, and QR codes, tickets used to look quite different. Paper tickets were printed for you and given to you in airline-branded envelopes that kept everything organized. At first, they had these red carbon sheets that separated the various copies, and the ink would often be messy. Today, the use of printed tickets or even boarding passes has become outdated. So much so that some airlines will charge you extra to have them printed.
Through the years, the seat sizes on airplanes have gotten smaller and smaller. During the golden age of flying, seats were large and spacious, and they had plenty of legroom to stretch out. This made it comfortable to fly, not to mention all the other extras like full meals, drinks, hot towels, and the little pillows to help you sleep. As airlines redesigned their planes to fit more and more passengers, the seats became narrower, and flying coach meant really getting to know the person next to you. One mesmerizing feature that used to display flight information at airports were the mechanical split-flap display boards. These boards announced arrivals and departures, and when they updated, the sounds of click-clacking grabbed everyone's attention. After technology improved, the mechanical ones were replaced with digital cascading sign boards, which could be updated using a computer, and displayed the flight information using a series of dots. Today, large television monitors are used in place of some of these older technologies. The other iconic airline that could be found at airports across the country was TWA. Transworld Airlines had a storied history that began in the 1930s, and the airline really pioneered commercial passenger travel. TWA was the first to show in-flight movies way back in 1961, and they also opened the Transworld Flight Center at JFK Airport which was, and still is, an icon in airport terminal design. By the 1980s, TWA was taken private, which led to massive amounts of debt and a bankruptcy filing. Then in 1996, TWA Flight 800 crashed, stressing the company even further, before they were acquired by American Airlines in 2001. Another novelty item that was passed out to passengers on flights were the free decks of cards that had the airline's logo on them. Often, these cards would be handed out to the kids, and they were meant to keep them busy while on the flight. This was before in-flight entertainment, and the decks of cards were one way to pass the time until you landed. They also became a way to chronicle your travels, with many people collecting them. Finally, Prior to 2001, making your way through security at most airports was pretty easy. You would place your carry-on luggage on the conveyor belt and then place your keys in a small bowl before you made your way through the metal detector. Passengers were not required to remove their shoes, which today makes passing through security a much longer process. Following a shoe bomb attempt on a flight that was headed to the US, the policy changed and from that point on, shoes had to be scanned for explosive devices. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything else that makes air travel so different today. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.